skiing faster. Novikov, he's, he's skiing probably about five seconds faster on that lap than we would have expected. Krasimir Anef, who year after year produces some of the best shooting results throughout the season. And he's been pretty accurate so far. Not so good in the pursuit, very good in the sprint event. He doesn't have the ski speed to win the shorter distance, but if he hits 20 out of 20 today, maybe he can get himself into the top five. 19th last year in roof holding, hitting 19 out of 20. It has to be the perfect shoot today. Surprised at Anev and he's got the big extra weight at the end of his barrel. Maybe he was expecting it to be windy today. They did predict it would be five to seven meters per second, but it's not. Hi, right. The message is already out on the course. He'll know exactly where it went. He probably knows where it went uh, himself. Interesting with Eric Lesser just uh, hitching up the race number because there's more friction to be had on his race suit than there is on the race number. Looking for a little bit of support for his first standing shoot. Ah, that's two already. And remember, the only other run out we've had, that's, uh, what a pity. The only other run out was uh, in, uh, what was it, November in Ostersoon, where he hit 20 out of 20. He finished third on that day. Yeah, he had a very good start to the season. I think uh, even the German coaches were surprised, but Lesser struggled uh, since the Christmas break, and that's a poor start from him. Three minutes added to his time, and that time of 23.16 will be beaten, probably by the next man through the range. Uh, interesting email coming in from Johnny uh, asking two questions. One is, where's Kostenko? Uh, well, she's got the same way as Lance Armstrong, uh, which was uh, bad news at the end of last season, uh, but also wanting to know what why the Germans can continue to insist putting in the older team members and not bringing through the youngsters. And I think yesterday's individual, Mike, was a classic example. It was, as Morovic said, uh, gets all the fans standing up and roaring. It is very strange. The, the German women's team, um, the Dahlmeier, who's won two gold and a silver at the Junior World Champ, she's in great form. But they are including her, I believe, maybe under the pressure from the press, they're including her in the relay on Saturday, uh, sorry, tomorrow. Would you put a newcomer in the individual or in the relay? Well, I, I personally, I would let them run out first in the individual yeah. to make the selection for the relay. It's going to be a, a very big pressure situation for Dalmeyer. Get rid of the team pressure that will undoubtedly be on Dalmeyer in the relay tomorrow. Anton Shapulin for Russia. He's not had a bad season, uh, Shapulin. We've mentioned a number of times what a brilliant junior he was, but uh, he's turning into a brilliant senior as well with that unique shooting position. Far more of a camp than anyone else on the tour at the moment. You might have seen down below, uh, Lee Jackson, a great start. He's shot five out of five. He's in 10th position at the moment. Bjorn Ferry clears the first five in the standing position to keep his chances alive. 21.7. The Swedes look on good form. Mike, uh, in the same hotel as us, I'll tell you what strikes you with a team like Sweden is the number of assistants that they have, the technicians and the coaches and the physiotherapists, and then you can probably double that for Russia and Norway, and then compare it to the smaller teams like the Dutch that are also in our hotel who just have a family of four. It's just the family. The father is the wax man. <laughs> the manager, the masseur, the everything. Yeah, and the financier. And the fi <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, you're right, the number of Swedes in our hotel is incredible. But then for four athletes racing, they must have fought 16 backup support staff. Well, they'll be expecting something special from Lindstrom today. Taking his time, nothing wrong with that on a race like this. He won't match the quickest time, but he's not going to be far outside. Five are safe for Freddie Lindstrom, and I think he's probably their best hope. Ferry and Bergman in the twilight of their careers. They're both going OK, but Lindstrom is getting better and better every season. 1.9 outside. It is still only Ina Bjorndalen who leads, and it won't be long before Bjorndalen is back in for shoot two. For Cad. Patrick is destroying everyone on the oh, field. He's, he's eight seconds, nine seconds ahead of anybody. Ten, in fact, coming into the range. Yeah, but I hate to remind you what he did last year in Rupolding in this very event. 25th position, missing a total of five targets. You know, for all that good, great skiing, he's taking an age for that first shot to be released. That was 19 seconds. He is making absolutely sure today. Ustigov's missed three in the stand. Can't believe that. No wind. I think he's decided the same as Tora Berger, Mike.
just make sure of the targets. 9.47 will be beaten this time round, but it could have been an extra 15 seconds quicker, but that doesn't matter. He's obviously decided 20 hits will win him the gold. With Svensson absent, he's been handed uh, surely a ticket to the gold medal. It's, uh, he still has to earn that ticket. He's been handed it, but he needs to earn it, and it's never easy. This man, Hofer, is... Great shooting from Hofer. Zingerly's on the scope. Zingerly, you mentioned earlier, won this uh, race in, what, 1993 in Borovitz. So Hoffer now has only missed three shots out of his last 40 here in Novomesto. That's the best he's ever done in his career. 111 inside the best. Welcome back. The first 11 athletes have been through their second shoot here in Novomesto in the men's individual competition Oliana Bjorndalen started 14 he should be in in the next minute or so for shoot number two five targets in the standing position he's gone clear on the first pro number 13 Lau Bailey started 30 seconds in front of Bjorndalen and Lau Bailey hitting five out of five in the pro Yaroslav Sukup about to start the Czech Republic just hoping that he can bring them their second medal of the games. Lau Bailey, as is so often the case, Mike, the stand is what uh, proves to be his downfall, but usually it's the last shoot of the race. What a pity. I wonder if the noise, there was some amazing noise there when uh, Suku went out of the stadium. Did that affect Lau Bailey? Forty-nine medals to his name. This is the one he missed in the sprint. It goes down this time round. He's halfway through, and the dream <laughs> stays alive for Norway. And Ole Einar Bjorndalen, a huge number of our viewers emailing in saying, "Come on, Ole!" Well, it would be a fantastic uh, story, and I think many, if he does win a gold here, Mike, many would be happy to see him retire at this stage. But he's desperate to go to Sochi. In fact, he wants to keep his career going all the way to 2016 and the World Championships in Oslo. It's incredible. He doesn't. He He's not even considering retiring, um, and, and he's on fantastic form. That's 10 out of 10 so far for Bjorn Dahlen. Yeah. His skiing is, is about third fastest so far, so he's well and truly in this one. Well, we've had a few predictions in for the results today, and Andre has got Oliana Bjorn Dahlen first, Forcada in second, Svensson third, Fack fourth. Well, you can't be right because Svensson's not racing, uh, but you could you could well have the top uh, the top three, but you've somewhat played it safe there. But traditionally, one of the lesser-known athletes comes through to take a podium place. That's right. Well, last year it was Sukup, wasn't it? Uh, out of the out of the blue, a surprise. The Czech. Republic skier, bronze medal in this one, and he missed one. Legelic, brilliant start, he's what, just over 30, 35. In fact, will be down to 40 seconds uh, off the pace. Three shot the perfect score in the women's race yesterday. I think it's looking as though we could have four, five, maybe even six who go 20 out of 20 today. 45 outside for Legelic, don't worry too much about that time. If he stays clear, that margin will get less and less as the race goes on. Out of the stadium they go. Number 12 uh, is Alexei Almakov of uh, Racing for Australia. And the uh, Australians have done pretty well. Russell, uh, a viewer down under, who uh, sends us an email saying, should Flatland have been disqualified in the women's pursuit? Well, not really, Mike. It's not quite like a Formula One race where most moves are intentional. Uh, there's a lot of ice out on the, on the tracks there. I think we all think she cut the corner a little bit fine, didn't give Zeitz of her enough space, but you can't account for the ice. You can't. Uh, Berth, clear, might say, delighted. I, I think you're right. Uh, that's, Flatland was trying to come round on the outside. She took it wide. I think she stumbled. I think she stumbled and fell in front of Zeitz Eva. They were both going for the silver medal, and, and it really did cost both of them a silver and or a bronze each. Uh, in fairness to Polka, she went on to, to take that silver, but you've got to stand on your feet in this game of biathlon as well. Yeah, their loss was Polka and, of course, Pedrushna's success. Another medal for the Ukraine. Four medals now from three members of the team. Labe Lund with a very healthy time. He's uh, probably about seven, eight seconds down on Martin Foucault by the time he settles on the map. But Foucault taking an age to get the five shots away. This is looking good for the man who's come in to replace Emil Hegel Svensson. Will he get five? He does. Great start. And 9.42. I don't think it's going to be bettered, but... Uh, Lavilun won't be far away, and uh, that's uh, 
an excellent start. Look at that. 42.4. He's got the lead by 0.4 of a second. Hey, that's incredible. He only got short notice that, that he's racing today, La Belund. And sometimes that can take the pressure off. You don't lie awake or you don't think too much about it the evening before because he didn't know he was racing. Yeah, Lavi Lund was two seconds outside Foucault's time coming into the stadium, Mike. So he gained, uh, well, he gained two and a half with his shooting drills. Morovets will get a cheer if he gets these five down. He's going to have to cope with that pressure. That was high. That was an edge shot at one o'clock. There's a huge screen in the stadium that all the fans can see and they will have seen that go low right, big groan, that's uh, really disappointing, everyone knows and particularly the coaches that the perfect shooting score is uh, all that will do today, 59 outside, he would have had the lead. That was the new lead time but he needed that last shot, Andre Ribar just, you heard him groan, he knew that... That uh, of course more of it's needed 20. It's not often we see that, is it, Mike? The top 10 all clear after the first shoot. In fact, 19 of the top 20 have all shot the perfect shoot. Great start from Steve Jackson. There he is uh, in 17th position. Shows what he can do if he shoots well. Norway looking for. Yet another gold medal. They've got three through Tora Berger. They've got three uh, through Emil Hegler Svensson, although one of those, of course, the mixed relay was the same. They've equaled their best ever achievement at uh, World Championships already. And uh, they could be on for more. The women's mass start, uh, almost certainly they'll get a medal in that. It's just a question of what colour Berger will come home with. The relays, might Norway to win? Or do you think, uh, I think in the women's, Ukraine are looking the favourites to take the women's relay. Yeah, I mean, the Ukrainian girls have lifted the ski speed. They've always shot well, but they're now skiing with the best. And uh, they really do look good, certainly uh, for gold or silver. Anton Shapulin. He's missed another. Three zero zero zero. his score at the Olympic Games, so he's done a little bit better than that so far. Bjorn Ferry, one miss early on. Ferry's another one of these athletes that have raised his sights. The foresight is raised up by 15 millimetres and the back sight. Is that for guys who've got big faces? <laughs> <laughs> it, it prevents you, you don't have to angle your hips uh, in the stand position quite as much, put tension through your back, so that's the main reason. Maybe he has got big cheekbones. Well, there's a really good time for Bjorn Ferry, 31-38, and the Swedes may be starting to think that they can get their first medal of these championships. It didn't start well for Jakob Fack, the very first shot went wide. He's hit the remaining nine, 10 now, 11. Can he take it up to 14 hits out of the 15 and get himself back in the running? He can, good steady shooting and the ski time is good. 31-38 from Bjorn Ferry is going to be bettered. Some way down the range. I think he was in, what, lane 17, 18, Mike? You're yeah, surprised that up, that's obviously the, the lane that they were drawn for the zero. And you're drawn in groups of five. The teams rank one to five. You've just got, that's Austria, Russia, and of course uh, France and Norway in there. And uh, every time it's drawn, uh, Lindstrom's gone out in second place after the stand shoot. Good for Lindstrom. What about Martin Foucault? This is second shoot. He's looked so solid in the World Cup so far this season. 